Hello everyone, this is Packrat Eastern215 with another installment of the Garmin G1000 tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about the multifunction display or MFD. The MFD is on the right side of the instrument panel. It contains all the same knobs and buttons as the primary flight display. The radio controls, heading knob, altimeter knob, barrow and course knobs also operate the same as on the primary flight display. The main difference here is the range knob. The range knob for the uh, multifunction display only controls the range on the multifunction display, whereas the range knob on the primary flight display controls the range on the inset window of the primary flight display. The declutter button operates the same way as it does on the primary flight display. If you click it once, it will remove the airspace. If you click it a second time, it will remove navigation aids such as VORs, NDBs, and it will also remove position fixes. If you click it a third time, it will remove all the airports from the display, leaving you with a clean map. If you click it another time, it will cycle back to where it adds all the aspects to the map. The map button here gives you the options to turn on topographical display with the topo button and it also gives you the option to turn on the traffic display. The traffic display operates similar to a TCAS. It will show you the position of other aircraft around you. And you can turn them back off by clicking them again and unhighlighting them. To set a course for an airport, you'd hit the direct button. You have a direct to window that pops up. If you hit the right hand side of the FMS button, the small knob, not the large knob, it will give you the cursor blinking on a single digit here. You can use your keyboard to type in a identifier for an airport, let's say Whiskey 90, so W90. If you hit the enter button, if you notice the cur cursor starts blinking on the entire identifier. If you hit it again it prompts you to activate it and you activate it and it will draw your course line for your GPS. To remove this window hit the flight plan button again. Your range is depicted down here 15 nautical miles. If you increase the range that number will change to 20 nautical miles and so forth. If you click the back button again, it takes you back to the first window. Now, here you have options. You have three different pages on this particular window. We're currently on map. You can change it to waypoint and nearest by clicking the outer knob of the FMS. Waypoint gives you information about the waypoint. Right now it's showing Lynchburg Airport. It shows you the various uh, uh, information available, longest runway, gives you uh, airport elevation, longitude, latitude, and frequencies. If you click it again, it'll give you intersections, like the closest intersection is Bojar intersection. Uh, nearest VOR is Lynchburg, the radial is 330, distance is 0.6 nautical miles. Click it again, it'll give you nearest airports. So you have different windows within that. So you have nearest airports here. If you click the inside, inside knob on the FMS, it'll change to closest intersections and closest uh, these are non-directional beacons and if you click, click it again there's VORs. Go back to flight plan and you can go back to the map page by clicking on the outer knob. Now we're going to load up a flight plan here. 
Say for example you already have a flight plan loaded, a multi-leg flight plan, for example for Cessna Sunday. And you need to start somewhere in the middle, you're not starting at the beginning. Well if you notice when you click on the flight plan it is already flashing here. If you need to start say at LFMV and fly to LFXI, what you would do is use the outer knob on the FMS to scroll down the list. And if you're currently at LFMV, what you would want to do is scroll down to the next leg, which is LFXI. Click the menu button, and it's asking you if you want to fly the leg from LFMV to LFXI and activate, you click enter. That moves you to that leg, letting you know that you need that you are flying that leg. Click the flight plan button again, and you're good to go. That's it for this installment of the Garmin G1000 tutorial se series. Come back more. We have more information to uh, share on this particular device, and we'll get to that later. Thanks again. This is Packrat Eastern 215, and happy flying.